So many people are shorting Bitcoin, and this really does blow my mind because we are in a strong bull market, getting continuation of the bullish Elliott wave count. In this video, I'm going to be answering a question that I see all over social media right now, and that is, when are we shorting Bitcoin? I see it from social media posts, everybody thinking it's a fake out, everybody just wanting to short and short and short. Not just there, but I see it in the order flow. Look at this through 76K, open interest increases. Everyone you see is on massive millions amounts of shorts opening, 4.7 million shorts opening. Here on this candle, we see another 2.1 million shorts. Here we see 15 million shorts opening, followed by another 5.2 million. This actually even giving bullish divergences around 76,000. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is we definitely see a lot of people shorting in the order flow. So this is statistical evidence-based data, a lot of shorts. I see it all over social media. Everybody's so keen on wanting to short this uptrend. And here I can say, honestly, I've not taken any shorts in the past week. I am in zero shorts right now as we stand across altcoins, across Bitcoin, nothing. Why? Because I see the strength of this uptrend. I see the zero reasons of weakness, zero reasons to short this move. And so I want to share that with you. I think I can offer a lot of guidance and tips and tricks of trading this trend. I've actually been a, a Bitcoin trader now for seven years, trading it every single day. So it's, it's fair to say I, I know Bitcoin like the back of my hand. I know how this moves. I am a guy that takes a lot of short trades. I'm a, a very big, uh, successful shorter of Bitcoin. Uh, but yeah, I've not taken a trade short trade over the past week. And uh, I want to explain to you why in this video. And that really should help you. And also recognize when is a good short trade. Okay, because I'm on the lookout for one. Don't get me wrong. I'm on the lookout for one. But as it stands, there's been zero reasons to take one. So let me pass that guidance, knowledge and insights on to you as we dive into Bitcoin, starting off on a little bit of a higher term time frame perspective and just acknowledging, well, we can take it all the way back. We're in a massive, massive bull market. Bitcoin is a very bullish asset. I think it's fair to say since it's in inception. But when we look back over the last few years, we all, you know, we've always recognized that what we were in over the past six months was the highest probability a wave four because we had our nice wave one, two, three. This was all a corrective bit of price action to give us wave four. And now we're continuing up for the impulse wave five to give us an other overall all time high push. And of course, this is very corrective price action. There was nothing really impulsive about any of this move, which of course is well, not of course, in case you don't know about Elliott waves, but it is um, indicative of a corrective bit of price action. And since we finished that, with the fake out down at $49,000, which was a long for myself, uh, we actually have seen then our wave one, two, and we're continuing the third wave of the fifth. So all of this basically to say it is very bullish right now from an Elliott wave perspective. So whether you're looking at it from the Elliott wave perspective or whether you're actually been following along with my higher term time frame biases from the volume, uh, this was uh, actually back in April where I was at the time <laughs> when I posted this tweet getting a little bit of... Uh, uh, abuse, a little bit of hate comments because I was following and remaining with my bullish plan as we were getting those pullbacks. A lot of people were like, oh, you've missed the high, we've missed the short, da, 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 da. you know, but like I say, I'm a help, you know, I'm really trying to be honest and transparent with you. I'm following the bullish plan simply because I'm trading the trends. And this is the, the, key focal point here because on these pullbacks a lot of people will forget about the overall trend they'll start shorting at the lows and unfortunately miss out on the long trades that trade why i'm talking about this one is because i'm still in it right now today from thirty six thousand three hundred twenty nine dollars today Still got that entry or to now. Actually, we're now we're trading at $79,000, so even better. Uh, but it just goes to show the importance of once you've made a higher term time frame swing trade plan to stick with it until it's invalidated. There's no need to close those trades. And one point before what I want to mention about this before we move on uh, is a uh, is about actually a interesting fact about funding fees, because I'm not going to lie, this would have caused a lot of drawdown in funding fees. So on Bybit, you actually pay on average around 0.01% every eight hours. So this trade, of course, held for several months. The funding fees would eat into it. So what's a tip I can give you for 
first and foremost that if you've got a nice swing trade long from lower and you might be using some leverage on this, a way to counter those funding fees that over time are going to eat you up, okay, it's look for hedged short trades at significant resistances. So you know over the past six months, it's fair to say I haven't just taken this one long trade and not done anything for the past six months. No, I've been scalp trading shorts. I've been scalp trading longs as well, but I'm very good at recognizing nice short trades to be taken. So that aids the funding fees that I pay on these leveraged longs. Okay, so we get in, you know, it might be just be held for a day. Some of those shorts I was holding for a, a month at a time uh, when we were seeing large pullbacks to the downside, right? So that, that's how you balance out. It's not just get into a trade and hold it forever, but it's get into a nice trade. And then as it moves up and you're getting in profits, when you hit significant resistances, you take a few hedge short trades and that balances out. You make some profits on the move back down and it, you know, aids the funding fees that you pay on these uh, swing trade longs from, uh, you know, 36 to now at $79,000, right? So that's just one thing that I wanted to mention there. Uh, and of course, we can go into some altcoins today. Uh, this was a, a recent altcoin long, but I'll talk about that in a minute. What I actually want to talk about next is what we've ha what's happened since $70,000, because this context is what is so important to what is happening now. So for that, we're gonna come down to the one, one hour chart, I think is fair. Uh, so on, on the one hour or even 30 minute chart, you know, this is what we class as our day traders chart. So people that are coming down and they're looking to get in, get out all on the same day. Okay, you could, al you could also view this for a, a weekly perspective as well. So you look to long on a Monday, close on a Friday, for example. So more of the lower term time frame traders, but this is where it's so clear. OK, and, you know, holding swing long trades is OK. I want to say easy <laughs> when you understand the lower term time frames, because this is where we start to understand, you know, strength and weaknesses before it becomes to major turning points. And for me, it's been really simple, actually, since the 6th of November, where we had a key level of $70,000. And what we've done is we recognized that if we reclaim and get above 70000 well, extremely bullish, we're going all-time highs. While below this level, we recognized that it was, a, of course, a resistance level. And what happened on the 6th of November overall, after another higher low, <laughs> by the way, we pulled through and we got above 70000 And that was the sign of strength signs. So what we call this is a major, major sign of strength. Uh, so, you know, back on the 6th, updating my Discord group, prices reclaimed 70,000, which we knew is a strong signal for new all-time highs because there were no levels between 70,000 and all-time high to hold us down. There were a few levels, but this is one key point that I want to say. On a chart, there are hundreds of levels, but on that chart, there are only a few good trades. So you need to take those hundreds of levels and you need to recognize high quality confluence with good context. So of your hundreds of levels, you recognize you're only actually going to be trading a few of them where you've got the confluence and context lining up for a high probability trade setup. Stop over trading, stop taking bad trades, remain patient, follow the trends and recognize key levels where you want to be trading. Do not trade every level. That's a little bit of a tip for you. So really simply, as we reclaim $70,000, it has been, honestly, it has been pretty simple. We got clear acceptance on the NQ above its previous all-time high back on the 7th. Very bullish. ES and NQ pumping very hard at the time. Bitcoin was range bound, but still no short trades to be had on Bitcoin. We're just following along with our correlated markets, ES and NQ, expecting new all-time highs to come. So on the 6th, on the 7th, on the 8th, on the 9th, on the 10th, it's been the same message all week to the champions. And that is really simply, <laughs> keep it simple. Okay, we're seeing you know, our correlated markets on the stock market, ripping higher, strong bullish market structure. Bitcoin was going sideways, yes, but we have to expect it to continue higher. No short trades, I emphasize to my team, no short trades at all for me on any assets, longs only, remaining in all my longs from lower and chilling for new all-time highs once again. No need to fight this strong uptrend for now. We'll see what tomorrow brings. So, um, you know, this is the actual tweet itself. 
since Bitcoin reclaimed 70,000, you have been crazy to short Bitcoin. Bitcoin is bullish. Don't miss this easy bull market by wanting to short every high. <laughs> a little bit of a joke there. At least wait for my signal. OK, because again, I, I have been trading this uh, very well and for a long time. And there are signs when to short Bitcoin, which have not happened yet. And of course, I'll let you know when they flash. Um, but, you know, just a few more context building posts here. So at the time, you know, this was while we're at 76K, Bitcoin still range bound, but we were starting to form those big bullish divergences. Don't be the trader that is shorting several times a day and losing so much when it is so easy to gain in the bull market. And, you know, the bullish divergences, which we're going to cover now, they just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it really is aiding us and relatively easy again to remain patient for higher especially when those open interest increases were on the new shorts, those silly bears. So just long and chill. I don't know why so many want to short this bull market. Clear breakout of 74,000, the previous all-time high. Bullish market structure. Bullish divergences even on pullbacks. <laughs> new shorts opening on the open interest. Short squeeze every time. Missing out an easy ride of all-time high are those silly bears. So what's a few things here that I can really aise you with? First of all, just look at the market structure here. So since the breakout of 70,000s, we've gone from low, high. We have then formed a higher low. We went on to form another higher high. We dropped for a higher low, higher high. And look at this, through this whole range around 76K, we had another higher low, another higher high, another higher low, another higher high, another higher low yesterday, today, another higher high. We could pull back all the way to, you know, $76,000 again and still hold an overall higher low to make a new higher high. We are just simply following a very simple trend. So I think tip number one that I can give you, and this is keeping it very simple. And like I say, that is a good tip. Keep it simple. While we've got this bullish market structure, What's what's the what's this need that I see everywhere I look of people wanting to short, of wanting to short, of wanting to time to high? Stop trying to be the hero or whatever you refer to this. Stop trying to be the guy that nails the exact high. There's a time and a place to do that. And that's when you hit some Elliott Wave targets. I'll tell you that. We have not hit any Elliott Wave targets yet. <laughs> We're still looking for further upsides. So I, I would just say this to myself. Stop trying to short the highs when you're not at any good confluence. Simple as that. And that comes with Fibonacci and Elliott Wave targets. Until then, you know, we've seen it on social media. I think it's fair to say a lot of people very anxious. Uh, you know, maybe they've missed this move. And a lot of the people that missed the move then want to short it back down. So they're getting trapped in shorts. They're revenge trading. They're annoyed at themselves. They're annoyed at the market. And, you know, a lot of people wanting to short it. But then look at the order flow here. You know, emphasizing once again, 4.7 million shorts here at the start of the range. Moving on to another 4.7 seven million shorts here and then look at this 15 million 5.2 million <laughs> 2.6 million like each major open interest increase and you're seeing a few little longs open here but the majority of that open interest increase building up th during that range is new shorts opening and these are not small shorts they're actually relatively large look at this 20 million shorts in the space of uh, even of an hour there you know that's that's pretty large and that is just while we're in within that simple range and look at that you're building up here some bullish divergences look at this price making higher lows i mean you're, you're very strong making lower lows there and look i, I want to say it again this is another bit of price action look at the open interest increases 8.8 .8 million shorts 12 million shorts 4.7 million shorts OK, these are the open interest increases with CVD making lower lows, price making higher lows. That is bullish divergences with open interest increases with shorts opening. This is, this is what I find crazy. We are in a all time high. We're in consolidation above all time high. Who is shorting at seventy six thousand dollars? Well, I think they need to find chart champions because <laughs> I could have aided them to not take those shorts and continue with the uptrends. It's what I've been telling the champions every day. And that brings us up to where we are here, right? 
So here we are up at around $80,000. So this is what I call a psychological level of resistance. So in terms of, um, you know, the level itself, there's not a lot of uh, confluence. But this is our psychological levels. This is where we get reactions off of, you know, 70,000, like I mentioned, right? For me, it was a really key sign of strength when we broke 70, 000. Big psychological number. We reclaimed it as support big pump to the upside. Well, what comes after 70,000? 80,000. So this is a psychological level that we all must be aware of. Why? Because, well, it's not a technical level of confluence, but again, it's a big psychological number. This is where a lot of people will trade off of just because it's the number 70,000, no, sorry, 80,000, but it's this, the same theory there. So this will be our next big level that price will need to reclaim. So this on the lower term time frame. OK, you have the potential, at least here, you have the potential of a lower term time frame range into something like an SFP. So we have our local range high. We have our local range low. So what we can do here is what I like to call trade the range till it breaks. Again, this is a five minute chart. This is a lower term time frame traders chart. But nevertheless, you still have a range bound asset here, you know, again, on the five minute chart. So it's for day traders, but you do have that potential of coming up to range high, right? Taking out 80,000, ending with that fake out for a short trade to the downsides, or just as you have the opportunity of the long trade at the range low, we trade the range till it breaks. If we break and hold the range high, that sign of strength for continuation. If we, though, lose the range low, and flip that into resistance, well, that's where we can start to get that pullback towards once again $76,000, reversing all of the Sunday pump. Why? One factor that you need to remember is the CME gap. So we actually closed that CME back at 77,000, but this is the, this is the CME is ahead of Bitcoin, uh, you know, for example, buy but ever so slightly, right? So you, just to remind yourself that you're gonna have a CME gap from the Friday close. So you actually will see that I will help you here. So Friday at 10 p.m. Da -da 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 -da. So you're going to have that CME gap yeah, to around $76,000. So this is just something to bear in mind. It's not necessarily just you see a CME gap, you're short. That's not the way you do it. But it's just a reminder that if you are to get a fake out of the high, for example, or you break range low and you start to see some weakness here, just remind yourself, we can pull back, we can come and fill, you know, because what's going to happen is you're, if, if we're trading where we are now at the CME open tonight, price is going to open up here. We're going to have a very big gap in price. So what that means is that if we lose our range low here and we start to get acceptance back into this price action, which I call like inefficient price action, lots of single prints, then it's very likely that we can come and fill the gap. OK, and that's not necessarily weakness. It's, it is another opportunity. Um, but nevertheless, that's a trade that's offered to us via that CME gap. So that's that's another tip that I'll give you there. Of Don't forget about the CME gap that you're going to have from around 76,400 with the daily naked point of control just below there at 76,200. OK, so we are reaching a level now where, again, there is no weakness yet, okay? There is no sign of weakness at all. Uh, we are still seeing strong continuation, but there's a few signs for day traders where we could at least be semi-interested in a short from simply the range high. There's no weakness there, okay? You have to be very cautious. We want to see the order flow lining up. Absolutely, you do not want to be presetting any orders. But again, some people might get, um, you know, very annoyed that, you know, you see something like this, a little bit of a fake out, you get the short trade. What you have to remember is we can still hold here. There's your high, there's your higher low, there's your higher high. You could get something like this, right? Continuation to the upside. That is why when you're shorting at these levels, which I think is a good opportunity for skilled traders, that you need to be making sure you're locking in your take profits, right? So for example, you could come up here, back test the value area high, get continuation. That would be something like a resistance into support flip on the value area high. There's no surprise that you get continuation to hold once again, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, 
higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Don't forget the trend. The way that I would manage this as a little bit of a tip is if we get the action that I want to see in terms of the order flow at the high, I will take that short trade. I would look look to lock in around 25% profit as my take profit one. Okay, protect myself with the stop loss. That way, if we get continuation, perfect. I get stopped out of the short. I look for another trade higher. But if we do get a reversal, well, I still have the majority of that short running to protect and hedge myself for lower prices. And again, I still have my longs all, well, some longs all the way back from $30,000, right? Still leverage longs open. And again, these short trades are what aids the funding fees that I'm paying. Last thing that I'd want to do here very quickly is actually talk about this A. G L D trade. This is uh, maybe trade of trade of the week at least. I don't say that because this was a trade that I shared to the champions. So we're not out here just crushing Bitcoin. We're also crushing the alts. This is one that I want you to pay close attention to. So this was what I actually shared to the champions back on the seventeenth of October during an altcoin trading stream. I li laid out the plan of why I was going along A G L D. The exact price where I was going along it, I even placed the limit order live on stream back at 0 0.96 cent. Okay, at the time we were trading above a uh, dollar. So I was waiting for a relatively large pullback to 0 0.96 limit order, everything placed on live stream, shared the plan, shared the exact limit order that I was trading with. Well, that limit order got filled, as you can see here, for a 70% pump to the upside. But I want to show you the accuracy there of, of, the, uh, of the limit order. Can you see this, my friends? That is the exact, exact, exact low of the move. <laughs> From the trading above a dollar where we were, pulling back to 0 0.96 for the exact dollar low for a 70% pump to the upside. I think that's pretty impressive, if I say so myself. Um, but it just goes to show you the power of patience on pullbacks. OK, so the plan, we're waiting for the pullback. We're waiting for high confluence, CC, anchored view apps, point of controls. We're waiting for the pullback into support for continuation to the upside. We nail the exact sat low and price sees 70% pumps to the upside. But the theory remains the same. We do not FOMO up at the highs like on Bitcoin today. You do not FOMO up at the highs. You got to wait for the pullbacks. You got to wait for the pullbacks, my friends. You wait for the pullbacks to, once again, like on AGLD, into continuation of highs, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, continuation for higher highs. But we do not FOMO the high. We wait for the pullback to support. We buy support. We make massive gains with those pumps. And the same that we're going to continue to do on Bitcoin. OK, we are not longing the highs in FOMO. We're waiting for high probability trade setups on the pullbacks and we're executing. We're making profits and I am sharing it with the champions. If you want to get in on the altcoins <laughs> like trades you've never seen before, if you want to get, you know, simply have the, you know, the, the, <laughs> the experience to let you know, trade the trend, remain cautious, remain patient for higher. I'll let you know when I short and the champions will get that information before everybody else. That's where I'll let them know when I take that short trade. Maybe we'll be at a high here at 80,000. I'll, I'll wait and see the order flow. But if you want that guidance, OK, of course, this is not a signal group. I will say that I am not giving signals here. Um, very close, but I'm not giving signals. This is not what the group's about. It is about educating you. OK, I'm educating you of why I'm taking the long trade there. Worked out very nicely, right? But the group is not a signals group. It is an education group. And I am teaching you why we're doing the trades that we do, the style that we do it, the execution methods that we use, the risk management that we use, everything that comes with taking the trades. That's what you get at Chart Champions, a whole educational library. You get four live trading streams a week. You get daily updates every single day. Even here on the weekend, we're coming into the Discord and we're giving updates. But uh, yeah, I think if there's a place that you want to be, it is Chart Champions. We can be the community, that family feel that you need. We're here to support you. We're here to help you. And we have a massive community of champions and contenders um, that are here 
to eager to learn, eager to succeed, and on monk mode right now as we absolutely crush these all-time highs with some epic trades and some epic profits. If you're interested in that, chartchampions.com, I assure you will like it a lot. As you master the order flow, you master the trades, and you get on to your journey of being a very successful trader. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope that I've helped you control your FOMO. You don't want to be FOMOing into the highs. You want to continue to trade the market structure, but recognizing don't try and short when there's no confluence. At least wait for the next psychological number, right? Follow the order flow, follow the divergences, and just make informed trading decisions. If you want to know my Elliott Wave count, if you want to know the next major Fibonacci targets tomorrow for the champions, I have a live stream covering my Elliott Wave counts, covering the next all-time high targets, and covering a higher-term time frame swing trade plan. That's going to be a very important stream, and tomorrow I will be giving it to the champion members. So if you want that information, head over, join the community. You're going to love it, and you're going to have a lot of fun in this bull market. Cheers, everybody. Thank you ever so much. And that is me signing out. Have a good one and goodbye. Cheers.